Alhamdulillah, we are fortunate to witness Ramadan. How many people were longing to witness Ramadan, but they did not witness it? So we lost some of them. Some of them are ill. They cannot fast. Although last year they, they were fasting, some of them now underground in their grave, rahimahumullah. Uh, some of them in hospital. So be grateful that you have, alhamdulillah, witnessed Ramadan and you are able to fast. So we cannot sometimes see these simple, great uh, favors which we have. So we need to double check the, the fact that Alhamdulillah, we are fasting. Alhamdulillah, we witnessed Ramadan. We are still here. We can do good, inshallah. So Ramadan as a spiritual growth, it's like you have the seed and you plant the seed and you look after the seed and you water it and you give it the right environment, the right temperature, the sunlight, uh, the air, the nutrition that it needs, then it grows. So Ramadan is, is like this, it's like an incubator for this seed and make it, it will make this seed grow better and better and in better conditions. So it's the perfect condition for the growth of this seed of Iman and seed of spirituality. I'll be touching upon probably three things or four things inshallah, uh, during this talk. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hadith, uh, he says, As-sawmu junna. as So, siyam, fasting, is a shield. Or in some other translations, you might find protection. So, junna, the Prophet ﷺ used this term. And it's a fascinating term. Because it gives you this ability to understand what's behind fasting. What is siyam? So we only know that siyam is abstention from eating and drinking and intimacy from dawn to dusk with the intention. This is siyam for us, probably at least many of us. But siyam behind the scenes, behind what you see, uh, the Prophet is, is opening for us a window to tell us what is siyam. Things which we cannot see. He's allowing us to see some of them. So he says it's a shield. It's a shield in two ways. Immediate one, which we use in the dunya, and uh, one which we use in the akhirah. Let's talk about the dunya. It's a shield against uh, sins. It's a shield against immorality. It's a shield against uh, Anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why in the same hadith that's been narrated in Bukhari and Muslim and in the rest of the books of the Sunnah, the Prophet sallallahu says, أحدكم, If you are fasting and someone wants to quarrel with you or fight with you or he slandered you, what do you, see? What do, you do? What do you say? You should say, I am fasting. When you look at this hadith, it's, it's unusual that someone is just attacking you and you are not allowed to defend yourself, so to. Of course, it's not physical attack here. Otherwise, definitely you need to, to defend yourself. But here, it, it verbal. So the Prophet, والسلام, he wants us to grow. In the normal scenarios, probably you will, you will insult him as well, which you shouldn't, but anyway, can happen. So in Ramadan, Prophet was saying, if you were fasting, then you are above this action. It means you are a different version of yourself now. You are a better version of yourself. So don't slander, don't use foul language. Don't fall into the trap of the shaitan. Okay, so it's nurturing in us control because automatically when someone uh, attacks you verbally uh, 
slander you or someone insults you, automatically many of us will just fight back. He's saying, والسلام, paraphrasing of course, you shouldn't do this. You should have control over your anger. You shouldn't respond like this. Okay, what do I do? You need to use your shield, which is siyam is your shield. Okay, so he's throwing on you a sin to make you uh, uh, contaminated with it. What do you do? You use your shield against the sin. So the sin will just be thrown away because you use the shield. If you did not use the shield, then it will contaminate you and you will get involved with that and you lost the battle, even if you win. You lost the battle because the battle, the morality here is the battle. So be, uh, take the, the uh, upper ground, take the uh, better position. Don't go to that level. So it's nurturing in us how to have this control. So Siyam allows us to do this because you are recorded now. You are under CCTV. This place has CCTV cameras everywhere. Ah, okay. You be careful what to do, what to say, and how to behave. Why? Because you have all over the place cameras. So Ramadan is like this. Siyam is like this. Gives you these cameras everywhere. Helps you to monitor your actions, to monitor your words. So it gives you this booster of becoming better version of yourself, becoming a better human, a better worshiper, a better father, a better boss, a better employee, a better sibling, a better child, and so on. Why? Because it gives you this control, this as well, we can say it's the Ihsan concept. Ihsan concept, the CCTV gives you the Ihsan concept as well. To worship Allah as though you can see him. So in everything you say or you do, Allah is watching, Allah is observing me, Allah is listening to me, Allah is with me, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So shall I say this? Shall I do this? So this is so important to nurture, to grow, and Ramadan gives us the ability to do that. If we were to subscribe to the terms and conditions of Ramadan, of course, if we were not to subscribe to the terms and conditions, then we will not get the benefit of Ramadan as it should be. So here you go. The Prophet والسلام, is teaching us how Ramadan can transform uh, someone's character from being an angry person to a, let's say, calm person. So your anger is under control. And this is one thing. And how to grow as well spiritually in Ramadan. Let me show you another uh, dimension to Ramadan. So when we defined Siyam, we did say it's the abstention from eating and drinking and intimacy from dawn to dusk with the intention. This is the technical definition, the fiqhi definition uh, of Ramadan or Siyam rather. Okay, so you highlight abstention from eating, drinking, intimacy. So eating and drinking, let's put it under one uh, title. Desire for uh, food and drinks. The other title is intimacy desire for intimacy. So these two, uh, we call them, as Imam al-Ghazali uh, used this term in his book, Ahya Ulum al-Din, al-Shahwatan, the two desires. So he dedicated a full chapter, and I advise you to read it, or at least read the summary of it, which is in uh, other uh, uh, forms of uh, abridged version of Ahya Ulum al-Din. So under that chapter, Imam al-Azali talks about rahimahullah, how to break your two desires, not to be controlled by your two desires. Why? Because these two desires, if you are to be controlled by them, can be 
for your detriment can be very uh, dangerous. Dangerous from different angles. Health-wise, if you were to overeat, you have overweight, you have the, the possibilities of all sorts of um, heart attack and uh, cholesterol and uh, mobility-wise and uh, diabetes and you name it. So plenty of stuff can be there. So I know that for matter of fact, many people are using different diets to, to lose weight, to lose this, that, and the other keto or meto uh, stuff which they use to, to lose weight. Ramadan gives you this program free of charge. Helps you to detoxicate your body physically and spiritually. Physically controls your food, controls the desire to eat. So instead of eating any time and every time and anything and everything, apart from the haram, of course, uh, instead of um, you, you just keep uh, getting into your uh, drawer and, and, and take the chocolate which you have hidden, then Ramadan allows you to control this addiction. So you have a limited time, a window for uh, eating and drinking. That's it minimizing the time for eating and drinking. Not uh, deleting the time for eating and drinking, no, because you need to get, get balanced. So it gives you this control in place that you control your desire. All right. And when the body is light, your mobility and your, your uh, movements will be uh, faster and better. And this is uh, allowing us to be um, more connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not controlled by our desire for food and drink. At the same time, whilst we are fasting, we control the desire for intimacy. Okay, so, but during the day of Siyam, the hours of Siyam, you are not allowed to have any um, intimate relationship with your wife or husband. So it gives us the control over this. And having control over this, it allows you as well to grow spiritually because it's like competition. When the Desire, the, these two desires are competing on your body, then your body is so tired and offloaded with the burden of these two desires and fulfilling the, the needs of these two desires. Now, when you go off the limit, you definitely uh, uh, get into troubles, be it physical troubles or uh, spiritual troubles, or even social troubles or family troubles when you go off the limit on the uh, desires side. When you control your desires, then you have more space to do other things. So your body is not overburdened by the heaviness of the needs of these two desires. There's a room for something else, for what? It's like, imagine if, if you have uh, two huge balloons in the room, you, you, suffocating you. So the less air in these balloons you have, the more space you have to maneuver. So the Ramadan does this. So it allows your soul, your heart, to take the lead now, not that desires. So you are controlled now and led now by your heart, your spirit, your soul, rather than your desires. And Allah wants us to taste the sweetness of the soul, the leading soul. In fact, we are spiritual beings and being transported to physical bodies. 
and we bombarded the body with all these needs and 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 beyond so the body is so heavy ramadan comes like detoxication for the body from these desires and allows the soul to grow and to lead and it feels different when you are led by your uh, heart led by your uh, ruh your spirit rather than your body and your desires so when you get into this sweetness then you appreciate and acknowledge what does it mean to be under the control of your spirit not your desires completely different uh, uh, feeling you feel lighter you feel more connected to allah azza wa jal you feel more uh, happier you feel uh, more in peace you feel tranquility you feel you are full of mercy full of uh, kindness and the opposite is uh, as well right when you don't have the leadership of the soul or the spirit then you have all sorts of troubles like uh, controlled by your desires controlled by your anger controlled by your miserliness so ramadan allows us as well to give to be kind to be nice to share our uh, uh, food with others to invite others for uh, iftar to give charity to be nice to support others and this is not just restricted to ramadan can be throughout the year definitely but ramadan is more into this and nurtures more these attributes in us so you can see why ramadan is is so special because it allows us to grow like this allows us to nurture the the qualities of a leader the qualities of the leader which is kindness you have more of it in ramadan you have generosity more of it in ramadan you have the good character if someone is uh, fighting against you you just keep away from any fights or any foul language and the like of it it uh, trains us as well to be more patient and patience is one of the leadership qualities the best among the best qualities of the leader to have patience it allows us as well to change our habits it's a proof and, and a, a huge a strong evidence which shows that we can change if we want to change we can change so stop saying this is me i can't change it's impossible this is how i am i can't change myself ramadan comes and defeats this statement and tells you yeah you can change you are fasting now you are praying tarawih now you are reciting more quran you are doing this then you can change if you want you see so it it shows you that you have the ability to change when you put your mind and and heart into it and you are sincere about it allah helps you to do that change which is required and it gives you as well uh, the the purity of the heart because in ramadan you you forgive everybody and you ask everyone to forgive you as well it gives you this purity of the heart and helps you to uh, explore more about yourself you explore about yourself many things in ramadan actually the the most important thing how strong you are or how weak you are you might be sometimes so it allows you to see your uh, uh, weaknesses and your strengths in ramadan and the beauty as well of of siyam and ramadan uh, it shows us uh, that when we live with balance uh, it makes our life better and this is how allah created this universe allah created this universe balanced everything is balanced in this universe even the soul and the body 
the needs of the body, the needs of the soul. So we, throughout 12 months, we feed uh, almost uh, the body. We look after the body. And when Ramadan, one month out of the 12, we look after the soul. Supposedly, we should look after the soul throughout the 12 months, but it's more condensed in Ramadan. So you see how, how it feels when you get the balance right between the body and the soul. When you get the balance right, then you see you, you are able to uh, excel. You are able to go to the second level and you have a special power Allah will give to you in Ramadan. The power for, of forgiveness and the mercy which he showers us with it in Ramadan, the rahmah, the blessings in Ramadan in, in abundance. Of course, it's throughout the year as well, but it's more in Ramadan. So yes, it, it helps us to, to feel all of this. And the more we look after it, i.e. these gifts and these blessings, and we seek it from Allah Azza wa Jal, the more we can benefit from it, inshallah ta'ala. As well, it helps us to prioritize uh, the most important thing in our life. And this is something as well, which is uh, the, the qualities of the leader as well, to put your priorities right. So Ramadan gives you this ability to rearrange your life, which sometimes it's a mess, sometimes it's all over the place, sometimes it's upside down. So Ramadan helps us to uh, organize ourselves more, to put our priorities right, that our main priority, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our siyam, our dedication towards ibadah and salah, and you put your salah in the right shape and you try you to, to be a better person and your character, then it, it is uh, allowing you to grow and be better, inshallah. So the more we see this, the more we learn uh, that there's always a room for improvement. And Ramadan is, is the uh, chance to improve ourselves. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the Hadith, uh, that as-siyamu jannah i started uh, the hadith with this word as-siyamu jannah fasting is a protection protection against sins in in dunya and protection in the akhirah against hellfire so you will reap the fruits of that inshallah in the akhirah so the more you grow into this the more your shield will be stronger against hell against punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. So Siyam will defend those people who are fasting. And there's, as you all know, there's a gate uh, among the eight gates of Jannah called Babu Rayyan, the gates of Ar Rayyan. It's an exclusive gate for those who are fasting. So yes, it is not just a shield from uh, hellfire as well. It's it's a, a key for the gate of Arayan. It helps you to get into Jannah from that gate. Only those who are fasting, they will be called upon their names from that gate, from the eight gates of Jannah. Uh, this is a special gate, like VIP gate. Those who are fasting will be called from that gate. So when we fast, let's, let's observe these meanings. And let's not make the siyam only uh, robotic. We, we refrain from eating and drinking and abstain from this and that. It's beyond this. As Ghazali divided siyam into three levels, rahimahullah ta'ala. He says siyam is of three levels. So siyam al-awam, the general public siyam, and the siyam al-khawas, siyam for uh, uh, special people and the siyam for the extra special people. So siyam al-awam, they refrain that the, the, the general public siyam, 
is about refraining from eating and drinking and uh, that's it. Yes. Uh, but Siyam al-Khawas, the second level, which is uh, of the Siyam of the special people, they not only fast from eating and drinking and uh, intimacy and what have you, they as well uh, observe what they do, what they say. So it's going extra level. The third one is uh, extra special. They, uh, they refrain from eating and drinking and intimacy and they observe what they do, what they say, and they will never do anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can see these different levels. So some people might fast but they have no uh, spiritual growth. So they are just robotic uh, autopilot siyam doing, if you want. Yes, it's just the robotic siyam, if you want. So you won't benefit from that siyam, apart from inshallah will be rewarded for that, but it, it doesn't make you grow spiritually because you need to get into the spirit of the siyam by being a better person a better character, a better attributes, a better behavior. You, you become nicer and kinder and more merciful and so on. So yes, you see the difference between the two. You will become more observant, more obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more responsive to his calls subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, you can see the effect of the spiritual growth if you can't see this, then you need to work on yourself. You need to try harder and uh, do your best. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is uh, teaching us that use this shield to protect yourself against shaitan and against the wrath of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the Akhir. So be careful not to fall into the trap of the shaitan. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, when he talks about ayat al siyam the verses of siyam 183 in Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter in, in, in the Quran, uh, Allah says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مَنْ قَبْلِكُمْ so siyam has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who were before you that you may achieve taqwa or obedience let me say so taqwa is like the equivalent of obedience so allah wants us to be better and he's helping us by creating these windows of opportunities the salah windows of opportunities every day five times a day the uh, zakah window of opportunity to, to fight against the miserliness which we have. And the uh, Ramadan window, which helps us to uh, grow better in our control, in our uh, uh, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's giving us these opportunities one after the other to keep us updated, if you want. So because you have all the time new updates, a new version of this program and so on and so forth. So Ramadan is like the uh, update of our spiritual system. But we need to press the button. We need to install the, the program and then and uh, uh, do the update. So it does this to, to our system. So we need to observe this and see this. So, Allah wants us to get into Jannah. But until we decide, he will not force it on us. It's our choice. This is the right path. This is the wrong path. This is the way you do it to secure your place in Jannah, inshallah. This is the way not to do it and go in the wrong direction. But yet the choice is yours. So Ramadan gives us this opportunity again to boost 
our closeness to Allah because among the verses of Siyam, Allah says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my servant asks you concerning me, I am near. Allah says, إِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Indeed, I'm near, close. So Allah is near and close. Is it only in Ramadan? No, but because you are in the state where it allows you to be closer to Allah. How can you be closer to Allah? I tell you. Let's analyze uh, when we are fasting what we do. We already mentioned this, but I'll repeat it in a different way. When we fast, we control the two desires. Desire for food, desire for intimacy. And when we pray, we control these two desires. Desire for food and drinks, desire for intimacy. When we do Hajj, we control the desire for intimacy. You see the pattern? These major uh, pillars of ibadah, of worship. The more we control our desires, the closer we are to Allah Azza wa Jal. The closer to Allah in your salah, you control these two desires. In your siyam, you control these two desires. You become closer. This is why Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, Inni qareeb, I'm near. So the more you have con more control on, on your desires, of course, with moderation, definitely. The, the, we don't have celibacy in Islam. We don't have fasting all year round. Yes. The Prophet ﷺ, with moderation, he will fast every Monday, Thursday, throughout the year, ﷺ, and the three uh, uh, white days, which we call it 13th, 14th, 15th of every uh, lunar month. ﷺ. So with moderation then. So when you see that, uh, so Siyam makes us closer to Allah. Salah makes us closer to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the key then is let's get more into uh, controlling our desires and the more we can be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a key uh, word to see that the control here makes us closer, inshallah ta'ala. And then, and then Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ujibu da'wat al-da'i idha da'am. I will respond to the call of the callers. In one condition, they have to call upon me. So, So let them respond to me and call upon me and I will respond to them. So we need to ask Allah Azza wa Jal for whatever you want, protection, health, um, wealth, um, goodness, uh, you name it. Anything that pleases him, you ask for it. And inshallah, he will provide it and facilitate it for you. So in, in these verses of Siyam, Allah Azza wa Jal is uh, teaching us that when you get into this month, this month is is special month. Is the month of the Quran, is the month of the blessings, is the month of uh, spiritual uplifting. Because remember, the Prophet وسلم, he received these verses, i.e., the first verses of the Quran, the revelation, in Ramadan, on the top of the mountain, the mountain of Hira, in the cave of Hira. Prophet وسلم, received the very, very first revelation, Iqra. So the beginning of the revelation was in Ramadan, and more likely, as scholars mentioned, it was 17th of Ramadan. Some scholars says it was it, towards the end of Ramadan. Nevertheless, we have uh, agreed upon opinion that it was in Ramadan without doubt. So yes, so Ramadan is the month of the Quran, celebrating Allah's word subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just by reciting it, by applying it as well. So 
uh, it's about reciting, reflecting, and then applying what we do. And this is how we should be uh, celebrating the word of Allah Azza wa Jal, which was revealed in Ramadan. Yes? And this is how we grow as well. So if we can establish this in Ramadan, we can extend it, inshallah, outside Ramadan. That, okay. Uh, many times I've, I've been asked uh, this very question. Uh, do we recite every day one chapter, if possible? And what do we do about uh, understanding the meaning? And what do we do about uh, reflecting and these kind of things? I usually say, if you can definitely recite a chapter every day, that's good. If it's difficult for you, recite whatever possible. And do one page reflection, understanding the meaning. And I will add to this, do one verse application. So make it simple and easy. One verse application, one page reflection, one chapter recitation or whatever possible, five pages, 10 pages, but aim for more as, as, as much as possible, inshallah ta'ala. So by doing this as well, you will grow spiritually because the more you read Allah's word, understand Allah's word, apply Allah's word, the more you get into the sweetness and the fragrance. And this is why the Prophet says, uh, the example of the believer who recites the Quran and applies the Quran is like the Utrija fruit. This is where we got our name, the Utrija Foundation, from that hadith. The inspiration came from this hadith. Like the Utrija fruit. The Utrija fruit is like the orange fruit. Smell is fragrant and taste is sweet. So it has a nice sweet taste. And the fragrance is, is amazing. So we need them to do that. We need to get into the fragrance of the Quran. We need to get into the sweetness of the Quran by reciting, by understanding by applying the Quran. And we can add the fourth uh, uh, layer here or level, uh, disseminating the Quran. Disseminating the Quran, teaching the Quran, um, reminding people about the Quran nicely, gently, and so on. So this is how we can, inshallah ta'ala, get more uh, growth in Ramadan. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم واتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم والله accept from us our good deeds forgive us our shortcomings our sins our bad deeds يا رب العالمين يا أرحم الراحمين purify our hearts Purify our hearts, purify our hearts. Enable us to forgive everyone who has wronged us, Ya Allah. And enable those whom we have wronged to forgive us, Ya Rabbal Alameen, Ya Arham al Rahimin. Ya Allah, give us a sound heart, Ya Allah. Give us a sound heart, Ya Allah. You are a pardoner, loves forgiveness. So forgive us, Ya Rabbal Alameen, Ya Arham al Rahimin. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, accept from us our Salah and our siyam and our recitation of the Quran enable us to apply the Quran in our life, Ya Rabbil Alameen, to live the Quran, Ya Arham al Rahimin. Ya Allah, forgive us, uh, forgive us our sins, our mistakes, and forgive our parents, forgive our spouses, our offsprings. Keep us all on the straight path, Ya Allah, all changes of hearts. Keep our hearts firm on your deen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, improve our character, improve our closeness to you, improve our closeness to you, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Make this Ramadan, Ya Rabb, the best Ramadan we ever witnessed, Ya Rabb Al-Alameen. Make us grow spiritually, grow in our closeness to you, in our application of your deen, Ya Allah. Make us observant of every action and every word we say, Ya Allah. Enable us to fast the fast of the very special people of yours, Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen, those who will do and say that pleases you, Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen, Ya Arham Al-Rahimeen. 
Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, accept us, forgive us, be with us, shower us with your mercy, with your blessings. Salli wa sallam wa barak ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi 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 wa sahbih